Good afternoon, everyone. Today we celebrate the vigil of the third Sunday of Ordinary Time, and we celebrate our wonderful Father Tien in gratitude for all of his amazing service here at St. Francis Xavier Church. We continue to remind you to please turn off all of your electrical devices. This mass is being offered for all of us and our families, and especially for Baptiste Cuisinier, Suzanne Boudreau, Diane Staff, Tommy Graves, Mary Marilyn Fister Award, James Swallow Sr., Lorraine Mary Leckler, Judge Patrick Schott, Rose Walgamont, Mary Ross Marriage, Sean Patrick Griffin, Irma Myers, Lucy and Hal Calder, the healing of Father Joseph Doyle SSJ, the healing of Matthew Isley, the intentions of Helen Worth, the anniversary intentions of Claudia and Larry Tadero, special family intentions, and special intentions for Mark Capel and Ryan Curtis Baker. Our gathering hymn can be found in the red gathering hymn, number 523. Number 523, all creatures of our God and King. Let us all rise as we lift up our voices to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. 
her Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Your word made flesh, the splendor of God. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they might have being, and the creatures of the world are wholesome. And there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world. And they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord.
from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality. Your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The word of the Lord. crossed again in the boat to the other side a large crowd gathered around him and he stayed close to the sea one of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward seeing him he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him saying my daughter is at the point of death please come lay your hands on her that she may get well and live he went off with him and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people wailing and weeping loudly. So he went in and said to them, why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kaou, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The child, a child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord.
a former brought his son into the city for the first time to see a college with his son may be interested to go to study in the following year. He stood in front of an elevator of a big hotel and watched in wonder. He did not know why an old woman got into this elevator, and a few minutes later, a beautiful young girl came out. He turned to his son and said, Son, put your mom into this beautiful machine. <laughs> She will like it. Every one of us want to be beautiful, but the elevator somehow cannot make us beautiful so quick like that. Life is a gift from God. Every life in God's creation is beautiful in His eyes and in His mind. Today, our reading reminds us about the gift of our life, both physical and spiritual, in God's creation for us. Those reading urged and challenged us to be grateful for our health in body and soul. They asked us to use God's gifts of life and health responsibly. In the first reading, which is taken from the Book of Wisdom, tell us that God gives us life and health. Satan will challenge tell us from this creation from God and produce illness and death. This first reading also suggests that the goal for our life on earth is to know, to love, and to serve harder. Then in the second reading, St. Paul wrote to the people of Corinth and informed them that God's plan is for us all to share in the richness of divine life and also share what earthly wealth we have, particularly with those who have less. Then in the Gospel, Jesus made a miracle in healing a woman suffering from a chronic bleeding disease and another miracle in returning the dead daughter of Zairus back to life. Those two miracles of healing teach us that Jesus will life and will full of life for all of God's children. They review Jesus as the generous and compassionate God who always wills for our whole life with the proof of divine power and infinite mercy for our Savior. Jesus walked through miracles as a reward for the trusting faith of a synagogue and of a woman with a homage. Although the faith of the ruler may have been defective, and the woman's faith may have been a bit superstitious, Jesus amply rewarded the faith they had by granting them health and life. Dr. Granger Westberg, the founder of holistic medicine in Chicago, Illinois, one time also asked a question to his nurse and doctor, and to see if they knew the healthiest hour of the week. He answered to them, made them surprised when he said to them, the healthiest hour of the week is the hour of our worshiping God on Sunday morning. Why is that true? Is it true because it comes from the major factor in sickness? and a major factor in health. Then he continued, one medical study showed that the major cause of sickness is desiring revenge. He then also put a survey of stroke patients, as most of them admitted that there was someone against whom they felt a significant desire for revenge. In many cases, that desire for revenge is a requested feeling, an attitude instead of an express action. That same medical study showed that the major factor in staying healthy is gratitude. Worship at its best offer an opportunity to resolve conflict through forgiveness and to express feeling of gratitude through praising God for His acts of grace and mercy. 
At its best, the church is a healing community. The church can only be at its best when her members center on and conform themselves to Jesus, the healer is described in the story of healing in our gospel today. God asks us to accept his call to health, wholeness, and holiness. He accepts us as we are. Whatever he created us, he loves us so much and always wants to bless on our life. Let us bring before him our bodily illnesses and spiritual wounds and ask him for his healing touch for us. As Christians, we believe that God continues to heal us through his instrument in medical profession, like doctor, nurse, and even the confession. When we go to see a doctor, he asks us to make pray for him, the divine healer, so that we may choose a right doctor who will make the correct diagnosis, prescribe the correct treatment, and give, up, give us the right medicine. Let us not forget the truth that Christ still work wonder of healing. Let us also thank God for the gift of life and the help we have, and let us use it for helping those who are still in sickness. Now let us stand for bless our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten of God made, become substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us then and for our salvation, he then died from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was the way from blood to hell, and in him then. For our sake he was crucified on the cross of time. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated in the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to the living today, and the kingdom of the land of men. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord of our life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and the solid church. I confess one by the for forgiveness of sins, and I don't follow. Trusting in the love and mercy of God, let us bring our prayer and position to God. That we might have the faith and trust in God that we see modeled by the man and woman in today's gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, For God's blessings on Father Tien as he concludes his assignment with our parish and moves on to serve the, the Vietnamese people of New Orleans East, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for, per for persecuted Christians in Iraq, Syria, and elsewhere, that they may be granted courage, hope, and perseverance as they bear heroic witness to the faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord for Pope Francis' prayer intention for the month of June, for young people who are preparing for marriage with the support of a Christian community, may they grow in love with generosity, faithfulness, and patience. We pray to the Lord. Lord God. For God's blessing and healing of all victims of clergy sexual abuse and for healing in our church, we pray to the Lord. Lord and through the intercession of Our Lady of Prom Sakar, we may be spared the loss of life and property damage during this hurricane season. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all who are sick, for God's healing grace, and for our deceased loved ones, especially for Robert Andre Sr. We pray to the Lord. Lord 
We now pause to add our own intentions in silence. For all these, we pray to the Lord. Lord Please join now in saying our family prayer, which are on the prayer cards in the pews. Loving and faithful God, through the years of human love, our diocese have appreciated the prayers and love of our Lady of Promise on Earth. In times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness, we come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may mourn their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Christ our Lord, hasten to help us. Mother Henry and Delil, pray for us that we may be a holy family. Let us all sing together song number 270. Song number 270, the blue book, the blue spirit and song called 10,000 Reasons the Less. Thank you. Be worthy of these sacred gifts 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by this birth he brought with you all to the ministry for the state and by his suffering and so out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, it is without end, we acclaim. <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Francis Xavier, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence 
we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his assisting bishops, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
please join in singing number 596. Be not afraid, number 596 of the red.
With my uh, hair loss and wrinkles, I'm going to try to find that elevator that Father Sien <laughs> talked about in the homily today. It was great. Uh, Father Sien and I both arrived here in the summer of 2018, three years ago. He was about one month ahead of me in coming here. So he became a priest for these first three years here at St. Francis, and I have been a pastor for the first time for three years. So we've been on this journey together. One of the first things we did when I arrived was we scheduled appointments to visit parishioners in their homes. We wound up visiting uh, 24 homes uh, with something on the order of 15 to 20 people at each home to get to know the parish. We uh, ended up visiting 450 people that way and I think established some good roots and connections in the parish. So for that, I am grateful. I think we all go know without saying that of all of Father Tien's gifts, I think his greatest gift is his joy. Amen? He is an ambassador of joy. Several holy people have said that joy, which is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, is the infallible sign of the Holy Spirit. So Father Tien certainly has been joyful. So much so that he was willing to costume for one of our events as a crawfish. And at another event as a sailor and at another event as Uncle Sam, and it was absolutely awesome to see him with white hair, a white beard, and a brown mustache. That was the best. <laughs> this uh, Mardi Gras season, knowing that Mardi Gras parades were canceled and that we weren't gonna be able to have our wonderful school parade on the Friday before Mardi Gras, I told Father Tien we needed to come up with something fun and lively for the school and we decided we would costume. It was my job to figure out the costumes. And I, I just prayed to God and said, let it be something really hilarious. Couldn't think of anything. Turned on the television set and there was that silly Liberty Mutual commercial with Lemu, Emu, and Doug. And I said, that is it. Naturally, I chose to be Doug. But I needed to make sure he would be Lemu Emu, and I tried describing it to him, and he, he was shaking his head. He didn't understand. I said, Liberty, 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 Liberty. He said, the bird? <laughs> yes. Would you be the bird? And he said, yes. And he was, and he was a great one. And so uh, his wonderful self-deprecating sense of humor is another one of his gifts. He will be missed because of all that he has given to us. I know many of you have made some very special personal connections with Father Tien in your time here. You have prayed with him. He's been part of the sacramental life of your family, uh, and he's just been present for everything. And he's left a special mark on our school where he devoted himself in an extraordinary way to our school children, our faculty, and our staff. So for all of those things, and especially for his great gift of joy, we give him thanks. We hope that you will be able to, enjoy, uh, to join us at a farewell reception immediately following this Mass in the school auditorium, which is behind the church. Uh, we tried to make this a surprise for Father Tien, but he's a very curious person. I'm not sure that there may be one surprise left. He's seen all the decorations. He's seen the cake. He's seen the slideshow. But there's one thing up our sleeve that I think he doesn't know about. And if he does, don't you dare tell me. <laughs> But please join us afterwards for a great celebration. And again, uh, thank you, Father Tian, for all you have done for us. We are grateful, and we wish you the best. And I'll yield the microphone to him in a minute. I just want to remind you that next Sunday, we've been announcing this for a month and a half, but next Sunday, finally, is the 4th of July when we celebrate our nation's independence, and we are blessed to have the Victory Bells Trio from the New Orleans World War II Museum in concert here for a patriotic concert at 
2.30 in the afternoon in church. So we invite you to come. Please, our church is going to be full, but please don't let it be full with people from Chalmette and Gentilly and every place else. Let it be filled with the parishioners of St. Francis Xavier. We will have our free hot dogs, chips, and drinks in the pavilion from 1 to 2 p.m., so a half an hour before that. We have three upcoming spiritual opportunities in our parish, and all of these are described in the bulletin. Our seminarian for the summer, Kong, uh, Kong Tran, uh, will speak about St. Joseph, the fatherly care of St. Joseph, twice on Wednesday, July 14th, morning and evening. We have our second session of the summer search program, that great evangelization program, on Sunday, July the 18th, from 1.30 to 3.30 in the afternoon. And we have the visit of the International Fatima Statue on Wednesday, July 21st. There have been many conversions and healings that have been attributed to prayer with this statue. And we're the only church in Metairie that will have it on that day. So please see the bulletin for the schedule for all of that. There is a critical shortage of blood in the New Orleans area in most areas due to COVID. Our Knights of Columbus will sponsor a blood drive on the last Sunday of July, Sunday, July 25th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. in St. Joseph Hall. You can sign up to be a donor online on our website, or you can call the rectory to register, or rather the parish office to register. Please consider giving the gift of life. And now we invite Father Tien to address us. Thank you, Father Joe, Father Kai Wu, to thanks uh, for me and I appreciate for that. And uh, thank you everyone for your support also. So three years ago, Bishop Amen called me, I guess he called me right after he called Father Joe or something like that. And he asked me if I want to work with Father Joe at St. Francis. And I said, yes, how about that? So. <laughs> Uh, I knew Father Joe since I was at a seminary, and uh, I spent a whole time when I was at the seminary. And uh, he was always so organized and always had everything planned in the end of time. And I knew that when I was at a seminary. And then uh, a few days ago, some people asking me what did I learn most from Father Joe. I said that the most thing I learned from him uh, is the way he uh, run the meeting. I remember one time he was so busy and he couldn't uh, run the meeting for me to meet two people. And he asked me to run the meeting. And I said, oh, that has to be very small thing. I come to the meeting, and only about a few minutes after the meeting, the meeting just went to somewhere else, and I couldn't control the meeting. I get lost for the whole meeting. And uh, I realized that, oh, it's not easy to run the meeting. So I keep going back to learn how Father Cho to run the meeting with his agenda all the time, and uh, ahead of time to email to everyone, and also so organized to very detailed and very organized, super organized to help every people has enough information and also to guide the meeting to go to the direct way and to make sure that this will be a, 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 a time enough for everyone. This will not extend too long for everyone to go home so late for a meeting. And um, the second thing I learned from the parish is about to call the people. When they come to the, uh, the, the parish, the, the first thing uh, I uh, dig up the, the fire at the Delamore and I didn't realize that uh, we should not call the senior, it's the elderly. So I called up and they said the elderly and the animal, how they do that. And they were just laughing about that. So that's a big mistake. I should not call the senior, it's the elderly. But uh, our parents, we have the senior program. It's very strong support to me. It's I enjoy the time with them and also to have time to join with them in the social time. And also we have the rosary group and uh, the choir and they sing a lot of mass, beautiful mass for us and a lot of social activity and event also. Even though I'm leaving St. Francis, but uh, I still keep up with everything in the website. And uh, last Monday, I will talk to Father Andrew Sanchez, and he promised that he will keep up everything in the website. So I can see that and go back to see you sometime for the busy thing. And I turn to my sponsor family. It's been much joyful for me to have them as uh, sponsor me, even though uh, in my uh, time at the seminary, and also continue in my priesthood. Uh, this morning, I stopped by their family to see if I can help them with anything to prepare for the meal today. They said that, uh, no, I don't need my help. <laughs> and uh, they let me uh, stay relaxed and enjoy for this mass and reception, which is so kind for that. And then I also asked them one more question. I asked them to come up to the stay at the, the gym today at the reception to tell everyone about the food they have. And the answer is that, no. <laughs> 
they so humble and then sacrifice and very joyful and such strong support for me anywhere I go, any reception I may have. And I'm so uh, grateful for their support me and especially also to all your strong support. And this is very so so very uh, good time for me in the past three years St. Francis. I truly miss all of you in my prayer. And uh, please continue to pray for me as I continue to pray for each one of you. And uh, we keep in touch and then uh, we still have my email and I still keep up with the website at St. Francis Xavier. And uh, you will see me sometime at some social event. And uh, as the commitment at the Art of Paris, I uh, cannot tell you what events I will coming back. But I'm sure some of the events you will see me around. Thank you so much. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you to come to pray, and do not for priests of the heavenly hosts. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits. Proud about the world, seeking the Lord's Amen. And as we go forth, let us all sing together song number 505 in the Red Gathered Hymnal, number 505, Rain Down. Mm -hmm. 